Hello Gophers and welcome to our new video on GRPC. In this video, we'll be first understanding what is GRPC and then we'll get deep into the protocol buff. Protocol buff is nothing but interface defining language for your RPC. So before we move forward and start digging deep into the concepts of protobuf and understanding what is grpc please do not forget to like share and subscribe to our youtube channel also press on the bell icon so that you don't miss on any notification or important updates on any new videos or series that we put across for you guys so now let's start by understanding what is grpc grpc is nothing but a modern open source high performance remote procedural call this is introduced by google and it helps you to call any code of your server uh, from another server like it is on the same local server so it's it's like you are calling one method of within the same server but actually the both uh, both these uh, methods uh, exist on different servers so this helps you in creating that distributed system more more efficient distributed system so if you go on the website that is the grpc.io and you read through the documentation you'll get to understand what is the basic concept behind grpc grpc is supported for for n number of languages where go c++ java python c sharp ruby and many more languages are there which support grpc uh, for your distributed system uh, interaction now about grpc uh, if you try to understand uh, why we can use grpc or where do we uh, where specifically we can use grpc uh, here is a small diagram that is on their official website that i find quite attractive and this gives me a very good understanding on uh, overview so uh, let's say we have a server that is written in c++ and again there is another server which i'll consider as a client for us right now because that server would be making some requests to the c++ server so this would be a client for the c++ server now this client server can be written into ruby java python or go uh, for that instance and this server can directly call a particular method of the server that is written in C++ as if these two exist on the same server machine and they are in same language so th that that makes it very flexible for you to interact with different kind of distributed system services because that's the power of distributed system you can use any language for any services that you build across so if you see here, this is a server that was built in C++ and we have two clients that is consuming the server or calling some method of the server and both of them are written in different languages. Now, how does this happen? To do this, uh, the C++ server would host a gRPC server inside it, which would be which would be connected to a gRPC stub that uh, resides inside the client machine now the stub and the grpc server they are interconnected you would connect them together giving the specific uh, configurations so that these two have a good handshake now once the handshake is done and these two are connected there is no difference of uh, difference that they would feel in calling uh, methods so it goes like very seamlessly now there are different type of uh, ways you can uh, have a communication between these two server uh, one of which is unary uh, communication where the stub gives a call so it sends in request with some message body uh, or the required parameters and it would immediately get the response as that message is consumed and processed there are three more different ways that is uh, where the stub would be sending in stream so it would send some small chunk of data or messages and continuously will be sending those messages to the server and once the this messages sending is ended that means you send in signal that uh, i am done for the messages at that time after everything is computed uh, the server would respond only one time to the stub 
the second one is the uh, the case where the stub would give one call only one message uh, to the server and now server would be sending streams out so this is this is a typical case where uh, let's say you have a list of list of consumer list of employees like you have a 1 lakh employees in your system or 1 lakh uh, leads you have and you want to get the list of those so 1 lakh list of 1 lakh leads would be a huge amount of data to be sent in one one call so we create stream for that and we keep sending a uh, small chunk of data to the client so that we make sure that the maximum message is re received at the client side without failing. The, the fourth one is bi-directional where both of them would be sending stream, receiving stream both ways. So we'll, we'll go into the deep of all these things when we start coding in grpc and understanding those things so for now first point that we'll be taking up after this is how to install a grpc now to install a grpc you should have a protocol buff compiler in your system so there is a website that i have listed over here i'll also put this website in the description of the video and this website, if you go to this website, this is the official page that I have listed there. It has many, many binaries for each kind of system that you want. So for us, I have installed the Unix system because I'll be using the Ubuntu uh, WSL system. And once that is installed, uh, sorry, once that is installed, it contains a bin, a bin uh, directory. I'll just, I'll just show you those folders. Uh, I had downloaded that for you uh, prior to making this video. So this contains a bin folder. In this bin, I have a file that is executable file. So this would be in the proper format of on which the system would be uh, would be helping to consume it. So if it is a Windows, it would be a exe. If it is Linux, it would be some binary and and that system. You should place this in some path in your system and include that path in the path variable of your environment variable. So if you go over here, uh, I'll just see, uh, I'll just echo uh, dollar path. So if I see, I have a couple of paths over here. So right now what I have done is I've included this this uh, our uh, proto uh, protocol uh, compiler in my go path so that i don't have to include one more path in my path variable because it is already too heavy for me and once this is done after this uh, this installation is done you just have to install one more uh, plugin for go so this is this is protocol uh, plugin so this is another command that is go install and the path of the plugin so once you install this you are ready to go with the protocol buff so this is this is all that you you have to do to install the protocol buff compiler and the plugin that's all for today's video we'll be taking up the third and the fourth topic that is how to create your first proto uh, file and how to compile the photo proto file in the next video so thank you for watching this video so please subscribe to our YouTube channel and also press the bell icon so that you don't miss on any notification on any new videos that we put across for this series or we create new series for some kind of new topics. We would also like to hear from you guys in case you have some suggestions on how we can improve or what, what topics do you want uh, us to cover for you guys that could help you in improving uh, somehow.